just getting us more comfortable with radians on the unit circle. Um, and what we're going to be asked to do is we, we will be given a radian measure for an angle, and we'll be asked what quadrant is that angle in, and what are two angles that are coterminal with this angle. Now, remember, coterminal means angles that end in the same place. Okay, so here's what I like to do. We're used to looking at the unit circle using degrees, right? So um, this is going to be a pretty ridiculously ugly circle. I apologize for that. Okay, and we start at zero degrees, and then we had 90 here, and 180, and then 270. But now we're going to be working in radians. Okay, and this is how we started with degrees. We're going to do the same to start with radians. So instead, let's label these in radians. This is pi over 2 radians, or half of pi. When we get down here, we have a full pi <laughs> radian. Here we have 3 pi over 2. And all the way a full circle is 2 pi radians. Okay, now a lot of us are not... I found a lot of students are not great at comparing fractions like pi over 5, where is that located between 0 and a half, between a half and 1, and pi over 5 you probably do okay with, but some others maybe not. So another way to look at this is to look at it in decimal form. So pi over 2 or half pi is 0.5, okay? And when you get here this is 1 pi, down here this is 1.5 pi, and then we come around to 2 pi. And what that will help with is if you struggle with fractions a little bit, it will help you to locate where an angle is in radians if it's written as a fraction. So this, for example, in which quadrant does pi over 5 lie? Um, you may know already, but if you didn't, what you would do is take the fraction you're given. So pi over 5, that's 1 fifth pi and write the decimal for that. So you take the top divided by the bottom, and I get 0.2. And since we're more used to comparing um, decimals than fractions, I can easily go, where is 0.2 located? It's located somewhere between 0 and 0.5. So I know my angle is in quadrant 1. Okay, And you may have established that already, because this is 0.2 pi radians, and 0.2 is located between 0 and 0.5 radians, okay, 0.5 pi, excuse me. The next thing we're asked to do is list two angles in radians that are coterminal with our given angle. So for example, um, pi over 5 radians would probably be about here. To get an angle that's coterminal, let me change my ink color real fast, we want one that ends in the same place. Okay, so it stops here. So what we would need to do is go around the circle one whole time and then go pi over 5 and stop. And every time we go around a full circle and come back to here, it's another angle that's coterminal with pi over 5. Your other option you can do is to go around the circle in the negative direction and end here. Well, how would you figure that out? Well, we start with pi over 5. That's our angle how many radians are in a full circle? Because that's what we want to do, is make a full circle and come right back to where we started. Hopefully you said 2 pi. So all we're doing is adding 2 pi to the angle we already have, and what that does is adds a full circle, brings us right back to where we were, but we've got a full circle and our angle. Um, so if I wanted to add those, I would need to put this in fraction form. It needs a denominator of 5. Let me multiply by 5. So I have pi over 5 plus 10 pi over 5. Notice this is still 2 pi. If I add those, 1 pi plus 10 pi gives me 11 pi over 5. Okay. Then we go, they wanted two angles, so if we just go around the circle again, so we take our 11 pi over 5, add another 2 pi to it. Okay. And so I would add 2 pi. Again, remember we have to have common denominator but we already saw what that would give us. It would give us 10 pi over 5, or 2 pi, and I end up at 21 pi over 5. 
Okay, so two angles that are coterminal with pi over 5 are 11 pi over 5 and 21 pi over 5. If you prefer to go the negative route and you want a coterminal angle but you want to go um, the negative direction of full circle, you would just su subtract 2 pi. Okay, so we take our pi over 5 minus 2 pi and we're going to get a negative number here, but that's okay. Um, so this is the other option. You can either add 2 pi to find another angle and then just continue adding 2 pi or you can subtract 2 pi. If I subtracted 2 pi, again, I'd need a common denominator, which would be 5. So I get pi over 5 minus 10 pi over 5. 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So we end up at negative 9 pi over 5. So I've actually given you three angles that are coterminal with pi over 5. Okay, And so, to, yeah, to be coterminal, you just go around the circle <laughs> one more time. Okay, so here's our next example. Given the angle 7 pi over 5, determine what quadrant it's in, and two angles in radians that are coterminal with that angle. So again, if you're not real comfortable with fractions, if you are, you could tell that, well, that's 5 goes into 7 once, so we're, we're a little past 1 pi into that third quadrant. If not, remember, this is half pi, this is 1, this is 1.5, and this is 2. Okay. Okay, so if you're more comfortable decimals, for now, I mean, you're going to have to get comfortable with fractions because radians just do that. But um, what you can do, again, is you just take your fraction. We have 7 fifths. Divide. Make sure you take the top number divided by the bottom number. Okay? Um, and we get 1.4. So we have 1.4 pi radians. Where would that be? Well, it's more than 1, but less than 1.5. So it's going to be somewhere in here in quadrant 3. Okay? We want um, two angles that are coterminal with this angle. So, like I said, all we need to do is go around one full circle and stop again. So, we're going to just add another full circle here, which again in radians, that would be 2 pi radians. Again, we need a common denominator to add those. So, we multiply by 5 here so that we end up with a common denominator of 5. So we have 7 pi over 5 plus 10 pi over 5. 7 plus 10 gives me 17 pi over 5. There's my first angle that's coterminal with 7 pi over 5. To get the next one, you just start from there, go around the circle again. So add another 2 pi, which would be, again, 10 pi over 5, rather than write 2 pi and get my common denominator again, since we did that already. Okay. So I have 17 plus 10, which is 27 pi over 5. There are two angles that are coterminal with that angle. Again, your other option is to go the negative direction. So you could take your 7 pi over 5 and subtract a 2 pi, go a full circle in the negative direction. Um, again, that would have me doing 7 pi over 5 minus 10 pi over 5 which gives me 7 minus 10 is negative 3. Okay, so that's another option. There are three angles. You only needed two that are coterminal here. And notice that does seem to work out. Okay, this is about negative 3 fifths pi. Okay, let's do one more of those. Where is my angle? Or we'll do two more. Where is my angle located? And what are two angles that are coterminal in radians? Okay, so again, here's our 0.5 pi, our 1 pi, our 1.5 pi, and then our 2 pi. Um, 5 sixths, where would that be located? So again, you can do 5 divided by 6 gives you 0.83 continuous. So 0.8 is more than 0.5, but less than 1. So we would be in here somewhere, okay? That's our 5 pi over 6. So we are in quadrant 2. Two angles coterminal with our angle. Again, to do that, we just go a full circle. So we add another 2 pi to our angle. We'll need to get a common denominator. This time it would be 6. So we're going to go times 6 and times 6 
and we get 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, which is 17 pi over 6. Okay. Um, all right, so next we want another coterminal angle. So again, we're going to start at that 17 pi over 6. We're going to add another 2 pi, which remember was the same as 12 pi over 6. We add those together and we get 29 pi over 6. Again, you do have the option of subtracting rather than adding to go in the negative direction. But we just needed any two angles. We could go on forever and get an infinite amount of them if we wanted. Okay, our last example is a negative angle. So the only thing you have to remember with negative angles is that negative angles open this direction. Okay, so instead of going pi over 6 this up, I'm going down and opening downward. So if you're going in the negative direction, this would be negative 0.5 pi. This would be a negative 1 pi, and this would be a negative 1.5 pi. It reverses. Okay, where would negative pi over 6 be? Well, 1 sixth, or 1 divided by 6 is, I'm sure you probably have this figured out without doing the decimal form, but if not, so that gives us negative 0.1 and then 6 continuous, which is obviously between 0 and negative 0.5. So we are in this quadrant here, which is quadrant 4. Finding two angles coterminal is no different. We're going to take our angle, which was negative pi over 6, and we're going to add another full circle to it, another 2 pi. Again, we get our common denominator, which in this case would be 6. So I have negative pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. We add those. Negative 1 plus 12 is 11 pi over 6. Okay, so notice that would be an angle in the positive direction that goes almost a full circle. Okay, we want another coterminal angle, so we're just going to add the same value again. Um, 11 pi over 6 plus another 2. Okay, which again would be 12 pi over 6 leaves me with 23 pi over 6. Okay, so that is how we find the quadrant where a radian angle is, is located as well as some coterminal angles.